thrilling and terrifying is the voice of nature roused to violence in a thunderstorm. Devastating the blinding bolts that flash between sky and earth. Smashing trees, smashing homes, smashing anything that offers resistance to their unleashed ferocity. Since time's beginning, men have looked at the flaming sky. First in uncomprehending fear of a mighty mystery, later with the courage of curiosity. Benjamin Franklin's crude, dangerous experiment may have proved a little scientific then, but they did set the pattern for a new and strange profession of today, dedicated to spying on the angry skies and wresting from nature the truth about her thunderbolt. Lightning protection for our power systems gives these studies high significance. For almost every modern activity depends in some way on the steady, uninterrupted flow of electricity. So nowadays, in any one of many selected observations, at the first telltale rumble which heralds an approaching thunderstorm. Direction north, northeast. Velocity 35. OK, thanks, W2. A lot of fireworks moving in. Big stuff? A doozy heading for New York City. How about calling that, that guy over there, that, uh, that guy who's always looking for lightning? Now? Right after midnight. Say, when a rip snorting storm's coming up, time don't mean a thing to that bird. He's a thunderbolt hunter. Thus, from some distant airport or power company outpost comes the warning for which our modern thunderbolt hunter has waited days week, perhaps month. Welcome is the call in the dead of night, for nighttime is best suited to successful operation of the traps by which this scientific huntsman snares his game. Empire State Building. Towering darkly above New York's nightlight, the steel-framed spires of Manhattan serve as myriad lightning rods. Tallest of these, and most effective for gathering thunderbolts, is the Empire State Building. Here the hunter goes into ambush. One of his lightning traps is set way up in the very peak of the tower. This trap is really a battery of special machines which measure and record the time duration and varying current of any lightning stroke which may hit the building. Here he is, 104 floors above the street. He threads his way through the maze of steel beams and braces. He starts the machine, tends them carefully while they warm up. Now everything is in readiness to take the fingerprints of any visiting lightning. But this is only half the job. He's off to another ambush. Half a mile away at the world's busiest corner, 39 floors up in the air, is a battery of strange high-speed cameras, especially designed to photograph lightning bolts at play. At the throw of a switch, motors begin to whine. Voltage is precisely adjusted, and as the storm sweeps over New York, there's nothing to do but wait, but not for long. And another portrait for the Thunderbolt Hunters picture gallery. Back in the laboratory, these curious portraits are assembled for study. How'd you like to see the fingerprints of a thunderbolt straight from the Empire State Building? Well, there they are, and beauty. A series of sharp peaks on a chart. And there's a perfect play-by-play -play photograph of the same lightning stroke. Together, these pictures provide a complete record. And if they don't make sense to you and me, it's only because we're not experienced thunderbolt hunters. Let's go back to the camera room and interpret these pictures in terms everybody can understand. Our eyes saw only this. But here are some surprises revealed by the Thunderbolt Hunter's ultra-high-speed cameras. What appeared as a single flash was in reality a series of strokes, starting with a stepped leader, a sort of lightning scout, moving downward in a series of short rushes, changing course with each rush. When this advanced agent of lightning contacts the ground and establishes a conducting path, a vicious high-power return stroke climbs up the leader from the Earth. Contrary to what we've always thought, the really destructive discharge goes from Earth to cloud, and there may be several of them in the same stroke. 
Each subsequent return stroke is also preceded by a faint downward leader. But these leaders are continuous, not stepped like the first. Sometimes in the case of tall pointed structures, the stepped leader goes up from earth to cloud, but the other leaders always move downward. Thus, scientific research forces us to revise some of our pet notions as to what happens when and how during a lightning storm. In addition to their long-range spying on real wild lightning over New York City, the Thunderbolt hunters have developed facilities at Pittsfield, Massachusetts for creating lightning in miniature, controllable form for close-up study. The man on the left is Dr. Carl B. McEachran, the chief Thunderbolt hunter. Those tall black metal banded cylinders here in the high voltage lab are the generators which hatch out the artificial thunderbolt. They're the laboratory storm cloud. The hum of the generator signals the approach of the laboratory storm. That's eight million volts. Just baby lightning, but a tough baby to fool with. In this laboratory may be studied in miniature many of the habits and effects of nature's mightiest thunderbolts. This model, like the Empire State Building itself, is constructed to facilitate rather than resist the electric discharge. So the model survives the strokes of baby lightning, just as its big brother survives the real thing by conducting the stroke harmlessly to ground. Here are exploded some of the favorite myths, such as the old saw that lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Watch the flash return again and again to the Empire State. Because lightning follows the line of least resistance, it returns again and again. towering structure acts as lightning rod for the whole neighborhood. Because lightning takes the shortcuts, windmills, tall trees, or other high objects have a tendency to divert its strokes from nearby buildings. When such prominent conductors are lacking, a good lightning rod system will take the discharge harmlessly to ground. But should lightning strike an exposed and unprotected house, the actual probability of which is amazingly low for nature's thunderbolts, a stick of wood simulating a tree, telephone pole, or the timbers of a house is shattered with explosive force by even this laboratory. The stick is blown apart by the gas which is formed instantly as the heavy current vaporizes a pathway through the wood. Surprisingly varied are the devastating pranks played by natural lightning. But always it leaves its evidence, clues which show the way to its habits and behavior. Thus the Thunderbolt Hunters, through their unceasing research in field and laboratory, are adding bit by bit to the accumulated knowledge by which they can cheat lightning's attack and check its destruction. And although the grim game is still far from won, progress is increasingly evident. Even when the most violent storms are raging, electric lights gleam steadily from city buildings and suburban homes. Electric service no longer disrupted by the effects of lightning. Electric transportation continues to function without interruption. Giant power stations continue to send out the energy that turns the wheels of industrial America. Wheels that must not stop. Wheels that must keep turning ever faster and faster to make America safe and keep America free.